Okay, we're looking at week 10, back to, and firstly, we'll look at some joints. So just, here we're just looking at where the joints are. So what we've got here, and it may not be abundantly clear, but here we've got an occipital bone where my thumb is. So this is the occipital bone here. So this must be C1 and then this C2. So the atlanto-occipital joints are just here, where you'd expect, between the occipital condyles on the occipital bone and the superior articular facets on C1 or atlas. Then uh, we've got median atlanto-axial. Now, remember C1 here, anterior arch with a tubicle on it here. And of course, behind that is the dens. And that's where we get the median atlanto-axial joint. And then, of course, we have two lateral atlantoaxial joints between the superior articular facet on the axis and the inferior articular facet on the on atlas C1. So those are the lateral atlantoaxial joints. Now, then we have the beautifully named uncovertebral joints, and I just love them. So what we've got are unsynoptic processes here either side of a typical cervical vertebral body and the joint that they, these processes make with the body of the vertebra above are the uncovertebral joints. So they're right in here on the lateral extent of the intervertebral disc. Which brings us nicely to the intervertebral discs. Which hopefully you have no trouble identifying there. Then we've got zygopophyseal joints. Again, such a cool name. So here we've got posterior point of view on, and we're looking at the cervical part of the vertebral column. And of course the zygopophyseal joints are here in between the superior, uh, so the inferior articular facet of the vertebrae above the superior one, and then the, in the superior articular facet of the vertebra below. So zygopophyseal joints, otherwise known as Z joints to save time, or commonly called facet joints because their articular facets articulating with each other. Now that's how they look in the cervical region. We come down to the thoracic, they're a little bit different, uh, but in, in, in the same place, but they're just facing in a slightly different direction. And then of course if we come down to the lumbar region, now they're facing this time in a totally different direction. This time the facets are facing, the, the inferior one here is facing medial, uh, laterally and the superior one here is facing much more medially which allows more flexion but a bit less rotation. So that's the zygopophyseal joints and where they are. Then we've got of course lumbosacral joint and here between the fifth lumbar vertebra and the sacrum. So here we've got a lumbosacral joint and then of course a sacrococcygeal joint down here between the sacrum coccyx. Now then there's some ligaments. We'll have a quick look at some ligaments here on a pelvis. This is a good spot to see some of the ligaments, but not necessarily all of them. So here we've got, again, anterior view of L5 and the sacrum. So this ligament running all the way along here is the anterior longitudinal ligament. Note that it runs on the vertebrae, the anterior surface, and on the discs. And that's going to run all the way up to C1. So that goes a long way. Then we've got a posterior longitudinal ligament. Now, unfortunately, they haven't included that one on the model but that would be right here on the back of the vertebra and the back of the in, uh, intervertebral discs. And that one's going to run all the way up uh, to um, C3. So that goes a long way up. And then actually heads, does it head up to C2? No, it goes all the way up to C2, sorry. So there we've got posterior, or that's where the posterior longitudinal ligament would be. Now we do have some specimens you can see it on. It's much thinner than the anterior, which is quite broad. All right. Okay, then we've got interspinous. Now, interspinous ligaments are in between the spinous processes. Okay, and we get them going all the way up and down the vertebral the column. And then supraspinous on the tips, running along the tips of the spinous processes. Now, we don't have that one in the cervical region, but we do have it elsewhere on the vertebral column. Then, intertransverse, no, we can't see that one. Ligamentum flavum, no, but I can show you where they are. So let's just have a look again. We're looking at the uh, vertebral column. We've got the thoracic region here. 
And so intertransverse ligaments would, of course, be running between the transverse processes. And the ligamentum flavum, that one's just magic, it's the one that runs from one lamina down to the next. So they're each, each one is a short ligament filling up this little space here. Sorry. Filling up this little space here from between one lamina and the next. Actually, probably on, with the lighting, it's probably easier to see it here. So this little gap here. And they blend with the joint capsules of the zygopophyseal joints, which are just lateral to them. Now remember, that's a very elastic ligament, that one there, the ligamentum flavum. All right, now a couple of others, though, that we can see on a mid-sagittal view of the head. So here we've got a mid-sagittal section of, of the head and neck. And so what we can see here are, of course, the, the cervical vertebral bodies here and then the body of C2 here and the bends there. So that's what we're looking at. Of course, we've got spinal cord and then brainstem here. So what we can see uh, are the, firstly, the nuchal ligament or ligamentum nuchae. That's this one here. Now that takes the place of where the supraspinous ligament would be in the cervical region and then some, and then fills out, goes all the way to the skin. Okay, so it, it goes further. The supraspinous ligament in other regions just runs along the tips of the spinous processes that the nuchal ligament or ligamentum nuchae goes all the way out to the skin and a lot of muscles attach into that on either side. So it's very important for that. Um, we can also see an apical ligament. Now the apical ligament runs from the tip of the dens up to the occipital bone. So there's a little ligament in here that is the apical ligament. And what we can also see is, oh sorry, if we come a bit further down but not so far that you can't see me, um, here we've got the anterior longitudinal ligament, and here we have the posterior longitudinal ligament. So both of those can be seen on this model as well. Now the thing to remember though is that the posterior longitudinal ligament changes its name up here to the tectorial membrane. So that's tectorial membrane up here, and the anterior longitudinal becomes the anterior atlanto-occipital membrane here, and then the nuchal ligament, sorry, not the nuchal ligament, the ligamentum flavum. Now, we can't see them because they're either side of the midline, but, but sorry, we're on the midline here, and, and they exist either side of the midline. But just imagine that we were just a little bit lateral to where we are here, and we were actually on the lamina, not the spinous processes here. The, the ligamentum flavum would be running from one um, uh, lamina up to the next, yeah? So they would be here, but they're, but they're lateral to this position. So what happens with them... When you get up to here between um, C2 and C1 and then C1 and the skull, on the lateral side, uh, not here right in the midline, but on the lateral, lateral to here, we would have a posterior uh, atlanto-axial membrane and up here we would have a posterior atlanto-occipital membrane. But remember that is lateral to where we are here, but that's where they would be, okay? Between C1 and C2 and then between C1 and the skull. So that's where those other membranes would sit, if we could see them. Now I think, I think the last thing we can see on here, and it's really kind of cool, is we can see part of the cruciform ligament. And we can see the part that's obviously right in the midline, because that's where we are. So here we've got an inferior part and a superior part here, and running across the back of the dens here, that would actually be the, the transverse ligament of the atlas. Now on this model it doesn't look any bigger than, than the rest of this structure here and of course I realise as I'm telling you this I just pointed to this structure here a little while ago and told you it was the tectorial membrane because that's, w that's where it will be. It will just be running kind of over the, the cruciform ligament. Sorry. On a specimen you will be able to tell and the reason you'll be able to tell what's what is because the membrane is, is a membrane, it's pretty thin, uh, but the cruciform ligament, or at least the transverse ligament of the atlas, which will be this bit here, and the fibres will actually be running horizontally, that bit is really thick. On this model, they haven't made it really thick, but on a specimen, on a real uh, head, it will be thick, and you won't be able to miss it. Okay? It'll be nice and easy to see, and that's where that will be sitting, the transverse 
ligament of the atlas. We may have trouble differentiating the, the superior part of the cruciform and inferior part um, from the tectorial membrane because none of them are as thick, but the transverse ligament of the atlas on a specimen we should be able to spot. Okay. 